Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to welcome especially Mary Maid Mead and her family, her children, and of course, our priests, Father John, Father Greg, Father Adam, our deacons, and all the community who gathered today to celebrate this Holy Mass in memory of our beloved Deacon Stuart Maid. This is how, how appropriate it is to have this Memorial Mass during the Easter season. COVID didn't make it. God always has the last word and, and he always directs us in the right path to the right moment. And Mary Mead, we are very, very, very happy to be able to be with you today as a parish family to, for this celebration. Brothers and sisters, let us begin this Holy Mass by calling to mind our sins, asking God for his mercy, love, and forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. You intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. 
Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God. Incline your ear, O Lord, to our prayers, by which we humbly entreat your mercy, that as you graciously number your servant, deacon and steward among your people in this world, you may now set him in a place of peace and light, and grant him assured in the company of your saints. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the book of wisdom the souls of the just are in the hand of God and no torment shall touch them they seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead and their passing away was thought an affliction and their going forth from us utter destruction but they are in peace for if before men, indeed, they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through rubble, stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. my 
shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. Guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. <coughs> for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all fall asleep, but we will all be changed. In an instant, in the blink of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For that which is corruptible must clothe itself with incorruptibility, and that which is mortal must clothe itself with immortality. And when this which is corruptible clothes itself with incorruptibility, and this which is mortal clothes itself with immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is in the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fuck. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. As I said at the beginning of this celebration, how appropriate it is to have this celebration in memory of Deacon Stewart during this Easter season. Easter is all about liberation. It's all about being freed by God himself from sin and death so that we may be the family of God's children. As the second reading puts it together today, death is all entangled in victory, a victory that Jesus Christ himself has won for all of us who believe in him. Every single time we face death, we get emotions, questions, feelings. We experience sadness, and even darkness, those existential questions that we don't have answered outside our faith. Why? Why do we have to go through this? Why do we have to say goodbye to our loved ones? Why do we lose the good people and the bad people stay around? I mean, look at our two deacons that are left. <laughs> Why? How? Who? And all of those questions are answered for us during the Easter night, during the resurrection night. Christ is risen, the first one, so that all of God's children may follow. The readings are all full of that hope today. The first one from the Book of Wisdom reminds us clearly that God does not leave his children at any point. And no matter how hard we work to walk away from him and from his light, he's even chasing us to bring us back to him. So death is not the last 
chapter of our lives. And especially when we have said yes to him, the life himself. He who is our shepherd, he who is our savior, he who is our life, he who is our God. He is with all his children all the time. And that's one of the greatness of God, that he can be with his death without having to stop walking with us, the living. That he brings light to those who are in darkness without blessing those who are still in the light, who stays in the light. That he can continue to bless those who are well while at the same time taking care of the sick, that he can be in the presence of the saints who praise him in heaven, as well as with the sinner who is looking for his forgiveness and for his grace. And so today, God is with us without leave him our brother deacon steward on his own. That's his greatness. And because deacon steward is in his presence and we pray that he is in his presence and because we are also in his presence, we are united and that unity is never taken away. Brothers and sisters, today we celebrate life the life of the family of God's children. And we celebrate it as we are reminded that our God is the one single Father of all who keep us united to Him and to each other. It is so hard, it is a challenge for a priest or a deacon to preach about a brother, priest or deacon, without sanctifying them, you know. We are also taught in seminary that when we preach during memorial masses or funeral masses, we should not say that that person is already in heaven because it's not up to us, right? And I'm glad it's not up to me to decide who gets to heaven and who, get, and who doesn't because I, can, I could be very unjust about it. But as I was thinking about what to tell you about Deacon Stewart, honest to God, I couldn't think about one single negative thing to say. Now, Mary Mead, his wife, might tell me, Father, I can tell you a few things. <laughs> but as a pastor, as a priest, as a brother ordained into holy orders, I just couldn't find any. And that reality fills my heart with joy, even more joy during this Paschal season, during this Easter season. Because it reassured me that when we believe in God, that when we follow in His footsteps, that when we say yes to Him, and allow his grace to transform us. Indeed, we can be good people. Indeed, we can be good disciples to God and to each other. Loving, merciful. Not creating trouble for God or anyone else, any of his children, but devoted to love and to serve. Love and service. Two things that indeed marked the life of our brother, Deacon Stewart. I didn't get to know him that well. Maybe that's what I don't know much about, you know, maybe any kind of negative attitude that he could have. But he always, in three years, two and a half, that I was able to work with him, that I was blessed to work with him here at St. Pius X, 
he had the facility to always bring to the table peace. Even when I call him in to talk about, I don't know, a pastoral issue, a need that the parish might have, anything that might not be positive by nature, he always brought me peace. And you know what peace is? Is the gift of the presence of the risen Christ. Period. What is the first thing that the risen Christ offered to his disciples when he appeared to them? Peace be with you. The disciples were confused, afraid, scared. They had not received the Holy Spirit yet. But Jesus Christ came and told him, peace be with you. Deacon Stewart had that capacity. No matter how difficult the topic will be or how challenged the situation that we will have to face uh, be, uh, even when things were just easy to talk about and to resolve, I always left his presence with peace in my heart. And that's a gift from God. And when he passed away, all that I could think about was about that. It was about his peaceful presence. He was also very devoted to pray for the sick. You know, his ministry of St. Luke that he himself and Mary Mead ran in our parish in which when before COVID that we could gather with our, all of these safety guidelines, they will be praying after weekend masses for anyone who needed to ask for healing, especially for healing of mind, soul, or body. So he was, that, that was a specific thing that God put in his heart and Mary Mead's heart to, for, to, to form this ministry of St. Luke, praying for the sick all the time. Another gift from God. And what are we but God's people coming into his presence with our needs and asking him to never leave us on our own, but to walk with us. The gospel today is all about that, the Beatitudes. Jesus sees this great crowd follow him, coming to him, trying to get to talk to him. And that's when he, when he gave them this beautiful passage of the Beatitudes. Jesus could see the needs of every single one in that crowd without leaving one out of his mind and heart. And because he sees all of those needs, he speaks in a way that each one receives what each one needs. So he tells them, if you are experiencing unjustly, if you have been hard by not receiving merciful, if you have been crying, if life has put you in a place of suffering, blessed are you. And that blessing always comes with the promise of inheriting his grace, his love, and his salvation in one way or another. Every single blessing that comes in each of the Beatitudes it is a reassurance for those who are following Jesus that they are not on their own and that they will experience the final reward of peace and joy and salvation and being in God's presence. Salvation is all about being comforted, about being um, uh, filled, not having any hunger anymore. It is all about receiving Mercy is all about seeing God face to face. It's all about being called children of God, the blessed people chosen by God himself. So brothers and sisters, no matter what need we have today, Jesus knows it and offers you a blessing for that need. And whether it is the need of Deacon Stewart family who are mourning his, his death, whether it is the need to be part of the community, whether it is the need to be at Holy Mass and receive his body and his blood, whether it is to be up here fulfilling for us, the clergy, our ministerial priesthood, 
God has a blessing and a way to fulfill those blessings in each one of us. I want to thank you all for being here today, for caring, caring for our clergy, caring for our clergy's families, caring for our parish, caring for our salvation and our liturgy and our prayers. That's what a family is all about. It's about caring for each other, about bringing God into our lives and into our community. And thank you to all of those who are joining for this celebration through internet, online, because I know there are many people at home also who wanted to be here today, but they couldn't. And I know they are joining in this moment of prayer and celebration with all of us from home. This is what a family is all about. And what is our Christian life but to love God and to love each other, to serve God and to serve each other. So Mary meet you and your children and your family. If you look around, what you see is your family here with you today giving thanks to God for Deacon Stewart and for each one of you and praising the Lord for his love and his mercy, that he has blessed you, that he has blessed the Deacon Stewart and that he has blessed all of our community here at St. Pius X. You are in our prayers and we ask, of course, to stay united to us in prayer for us too. May God bless you. May he comfort you. And may he always keep us united until we may be together celebrating this, his presence, but up there with Deacon Stewart. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we now join in prayer to his. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayers. In baptism, Stuart received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Our brother Stuart was nourished at the table of the Savior. <clears throat> Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. Our brother Stuart served God's people as a deacon of the church. Prepare a place for him in the kingdom whose coming he proclaimed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. prayers. Many friends and family members have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your Son. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayers. prayers. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord hear me. <clears throat> For the family and friends of Stuart, they seek comfort and consolation, heal their pain, and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord we are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother Stuart. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, give it of peace and heal it of souls. Hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Look with favor, O Lord, on your servant, Deacon Stuart, for whom we offer you this sacrifice of praise, humbly entreating that reconciled with you through this devoted office, he may marry to rise again to life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up, Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to allow you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, 
and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <clears throat> You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous as resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ.
through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we there to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant a peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, a peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul shall be healed.
Renewed by this life-giving sacrament, we pray, O Lord, that the soul of our brother, Deacon Stuart, to whom you gave a part in your covenant, may be purified by the power of this mystery and rejoice without end in the peace of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Again, I want to thank all of you who came to celebrate this Memorial Mass uh, today. Uh, Father John, Father Greg, Father Adam, thank you for being here. Deacons, you are also the best of the best. You know that. Thank you very much for being here. Merry meet, and to you and your family, our love, our prayers always. Thank you for allowing the church to be the other woman in the life of a steward. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your husband with our community. Thank you for being part of that diaconate that God called you both to fulfill us as your mission and your ministry among us from the bottom of our hearts and with great gratitude. Thank you, thank you very much. And we are your family, you are our family. We continue to be united in prayer. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.